Hi, I'm Bill Singh from Faith Presbyterian Church. I'm here with my wife, Melissa, for today's message, which is called Remember the Gospel. The message reminds me of Acts chapter 5, where Peter and John are suffering for the sake of sharing the gospel. And they say they were full of joy um, as they left. Every day they taught in the temple courtyards from house to house. They never stopped telling the people the good news that Jesus is the Messiah. So that's what we're doing today. Yes, so it's a very special message, a very transformative message, as this is the very message that unifies us together as a body of Christ. I would encourage you to share it with your friends and whoever you can. So again, the name of the message is Remember the Gospel. Stay tuned. The way that we started off the message at church was by playing a clip of Duck Dynasty star Phil Robertson's testimony. Now there are countless stories like Phil Robertson's where at one moment they were hopelessly lost and in the next moment they have an encounter with Jesus and their life is transformed forever. The fascinating thing about Phil's message was that he had never heard the gospel. In fact, when the evangelist mentioned it to him, he thought that it was like a music genre or something. As soon as he heard the good news of Jesus Christ, he accepted it by faith, and he was saved. Now, if you ever heard the, never heard the gospel message before, you might say, well, saved from what? Well, first of all, he was an alcoholic. He was a drug user. He was an adulterer. And he even found out later in his life that he had a daughter out of wedlock. But that's not all. If Jesus only gives us hope in this life, we have no hope at all. This is the gospel message. Every human is a sinner. We all deserve eternal separation from God because God is holy and righteous while we are vile and wicked. But because of God's great love for us, he sent his only son into the world as a mediator between us and God. He lived a life as a human in the righteousness of God. Because of his perfect life, he became the perfect sacrifice by dying on a cross. He accomplished a forgiveness of sins, reconciling mankind to God Almighty. Three days after his death, he rose from the dead and is now at the right hand of God the Father. Therefore, if you put your faith in Jesus Christ, you will have eternal life. The Apostle Paul commands us to remember the gospel. In 2 Timothy 2.8, he says, Remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, descended from David, this is my gospel. Now you notice that Paul does not write to tell us to tell people what he thinks about Jesus. He says to remember Jesus. That means he is talking about a specific person in history and what that person had accomplished. Jesus is not merely a concoction of the ideal person. He was not an ordinary person who's just shrouded in hundreds of years of legends. He is not the creation of any human mind from back in the first century or by philosophers or modern day thinkers. He was not even created by God. Jesus Christ is the Son of God, born of a woman, and a descendant of the great King David. Now, I've been reading a book by John Cooper called Awake and Alive to Truth. Now, John Cooper, he is a Christian, and he is a member of the rock band 
Skillet. And inside of his book, he recalls this story of when his group first started becoming famous. Finally started becoming famous and he's walking down the street and for the first time ever, somebody random just recognizes him. And then she said she would like to get a picture with him if that didn't bother him. And of course, John said, yeah, I'd love to get a picture with you. So she starts setting up her phone to take her picture with him. But before she snapped the shot, she said, I can't believe I'm getting a picture with Papa Roach. Could you imagine this happening to you? I know that my grandpa Kramer looked a lot like Ronald Reagan. And I know of a time that he was even stopped as he was walking down the street so that someone could get their pictures taken with him. And I have to tell you that my grandpa Kramer and Ronald Reagan were two totally different people. But imagine if the Secret Service started chauffeuring around my grandpa instead of Ronald Reagan, declaring him to be president or former president, and giving him the sort of attention that, they that they're supposed to give to the president. That would be a problem, right? Now, in fairness, whenever I see one of those uh, American president timelines, you know, one of those ones that gives pictures and names for all of the American presidents in chronological order, every time I see Ronald Reagan's picture on this timeline, I point to him and I say, hey, it's Grandpa. Now, what if we started doing the same thing to Jesus? What if we transform Jesus into just any other religious figure? What if we transform Jesus into just another founder of a world religion? What if we only take the parts of Jesus that we like and leave behind all the things that he says that are challenging. What if we say that we want all the love and the hope of the New Testament, but none of the judgment and wrath of the Old Testament? How did the Jews know who Jesus was supposed to be? Here's the secret. It's because of all the judgmental stuff inside of the Old Testament. Jesus was sent as a sacrifice of atonement. He was sent to take upon the judgment of God that was supposed to fall upon us. This was all foretold in the Old Testament. Now, less than half of British Christians believe that Jesus Christ died for their sins, and a quarter of them do not believe in the resurrection. And nearly half of Americans believe that Jesus had sinned in his lifetime. And if that's true, Jesus would not be the perfect sacrifice for mankind's sins. We need to make sure that we are believing in Jesus and not just some guy walking down the street that happens to look like Jesus. You see, even Pontius Pilate, the man who turned Jesus over to the Jews recognized that there is something supremely different about him. Think about this. The Jews hated the Romans, but they are betraying one of their own over to the Roman authority and asking them to condemn Jesus to death. Upon his own questioning, Pilate saw that Jesus had done no wrong. He saw that he was an innocent man and he saw that he deserved to be set free. The problem is that would have betrayed the gospel message. Jesus did die for the sins of the world. He did rise from the dead. He did promise that anyone who would have faith in him would have eternal life. This is what unifies us as a body of believers. It is not our good works, not our reputations, not our denominations. The Apostle Paul endured 
prison because he knew that this message had to be heard by the world. So when you pray, remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, descended from David. This is our gospel. I'd like to thank you for joining us for today's message. Again, my name is Bill Seng. You can join us at Faith Presbyterian Church at 1030 on Sunday mornings. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.